Okay guys, uh, today we're gonna do uh, something a little bit different. We're gonna do a different video and it's um, it's going to be a little more serious this time rather than like for laughs and stuff like this. I appreciate you guys uh, watching this video and stuff too. It really, um, you know, helps me out a lot and it shows me that, you know, a lot of people are watching my videos and stuff. So I just wanna say thank you to you guys. So just as a disclaimer, this is my biased opinion and other people's opinions. So let's start this off with uh, the cons of working in a factory. My experience is that all shops are shitholes. I've been working in a factory for about four years now and it keeps getting worse every single year. When I started out, I was a temporary employee, meaning that I would get hired in after 90 days. I found out later that that was a big lie. Big corporations with no union will lie straight to your face. Anyways, I started out at 11.50 at the time and it seemed like a good pay. I was just quitting my job at the local grocery store and I thought I was going to be making the so-called good money working in a factory. Four years into this, I was wiping people's asses, taking names, and working on digging my way out. Every day is like hell on earth. Sound familiar to doom? That's because it fucking is. So I get to work, just a normal routine. I go fill my water bottle, I empty my bladder and pop in a piece of gum because this shit's about to get stressful. There are always assholes who work at the shop too. They say stupid comments just to get a reaction from you. Sometimes you feel like unleashing a rage storm and doing something drastic. I'm more mature than that. You just have to ignore them or say another smart ass comment. And then there is always racism and sexism, which is terrible. Working an eight hour shift is physically exhausting and will have you tired and sleepy right before you leave work. Don't volunteer for overtime unless you get mandated. Then working is a biatch because you spend most of your weekends working without a break. Oh yeah, I forget. That's what Labor Day is for, to take a break. Yeah, fuck you. Working in 12 hours is hard. You basically always regret it the next day because you are recovering from the day before. You still have to come in on your normal hours that you are scheduled to. Taking breaks is also bullshit too. So at my factory you only get a 10 minute break and a 20 minute break. Literally, you are treated like a slave. But they call you the so called labor. For me, that is how it goes. On my 10 minute break, I have to go to the bathroom and have a snack and I check my phone. Don't bother trying to take a shit, cause you ain't gonna make it. Then, on my 20 minute break, I basically do the same thing. This time, racing and packing my food down my throat as fast as I can. I'm surprised I haven't choked yet. I guess it's not my time to die yet. When you're on the floor, you have to listen to your supervisor and team leads. That's fine, but when the bullshit starts, you're in it for 8 hours. When you're on the floor, the attitude of others will affect you. A lot of people are negative because both you and them don't really want to be there. It is both mind numbing and it will make you into a brain dead monkey by the time you are done. I'm pretty sure from all the hours that I've worked there that I've lost a couple brain cells. Working by yourself also creates a lot of anxiety and negative thoughts. Over the past three years I can definitely tell that my mood and demeanor have changed drastically. The way I treat people seems to be different also. No shit. I find myself constantly trying to look back at the past and trying to fix it, until I realize there is no going back to fix the past. Let's get into the unfair treatment. At my factory, there are two kinds of people who work there. First, we have big wig blue collar office workers who think they are superior in every way. Then we have the factory worker, who is the laborer, who is a hard worker, and without him or her, there wouldn't be any office staff. I fit into the category of a factory worker, otherwise I wouldn't be making this video, my dudes. When the office staff are out there, you have to make sure to do your job, and sometimes you even have to work with the office staff. The atmosphere is that of segregation and prejudice. Mainly, they watch you close like a hound watches a fresh cut steak. They watch you to make sure you are doing your job. Like I don't really have that pressure from my supervisor. Next, it also seems like they want you to know who is in charge. It's some kind of entitlement I've never seen before. Crikey. Oh, crikey. 
Look at the office staff in the natural habitat. Oi, they think they're special. I'm always under the impression that I need to hide or to be working. After all, if you work in a factory, you are considered the working class and you get treated poorly, that's the harsh reality. In my opinion, we should be treated better. Fuck all this competition of who's better. So I have been recently looking up articles and I picked out four articles that I've been using. I mean, I have my own experience, but it's also good to look up other facts and opinions. These articles will have the link in the description below. This first article I found comes from www.businessinsider.com. I'm quoting this website because they have good insight. Factory jobs can also still be good, but over the last three decades, benefits have eroded and pay has stagnated for many, or even fallen. Some entry-level manufacturing jobs pay so little that the workers depend on government aid to feed their families and pay for health care. Take Charles Montgomery, also of Canton, I-11, until he was laid off in the mid-September. He worked for a staffing agency that supplies labor to Caterpillar. Montgomery, 28, was paid $8.75 an hour as a forklift operator and put in as many as 70 hours a week to support his three children and fiance. He relied on roughly $800 in government aid to buy food. Even then, he said he pinched pennies to pay for a $3.65 doctor visit or a $2 prescription made affordable through the government backed health care program for the poor. Wages have declined across many industries, including manufacturing, as unions have lost their bargaining clout. According to the Economy Policies uh, Institute, a, a pro-labor think tank based in Washington between 1973 in 2011, real wages and benefits, which were adjusted to reflect on the effect of inflation, rose only 10.7%. Most of that increase occurred in the 90s, according to the Institute. In my opinion, working for a factory is better than working for a minimum wage job, but I'm going to save the pros for another video. The past couple of months, I was thinking to myself that the pay and the benefits have gone down significantly. So this website isn't wrong. I found this website which has details and information on working and managing school life. Uh, the website is called www.learnhowtobecome.org. Today there are many more non-traditional students pursuing degrees than ever before, which means the typical college experience looks a little different. The estimated percentage of students who work while in school hasn't changed much over the last several decades, but the number of hours these students are working has. A Georgetown University report shows that 75% of graduate students and roughly 40% of undergraduates work at least 30 hours per week while attending school. One in four working learners is simultaneously attending full-time college while holding down a full-time job. And on top of that, about 90% of all working students have children. Balancing a full-time job with a full course load and for some handling family obligations as well isn't easy. If you're one of the many trying to balance it at all, read to get the uh, expert recommendations on how to manage school and work without losing your sanity. So even there, like in the passage, it even says, you know, with all the stuff that you have to do, that it's really, really hard for most just to like accomplish most of these things because, you know, everybody's busy, everybody has to do things and things come up and life just happens. Um, some of you will say, uh, just go back to college and uh, get a better job. It isn't that easy. Okay, smart ass. Let's take, for example, the life of Joe Blow, fake name. He has a full-time job, he has two kids, and a wife to support. On top of that, compromising his happiness, freedom, and time just to do all those. Now tell me how you find the time to do all those. It's easier said than done. There are certain side effects from working in a factory. Some of them are psychological and some are physical. From my experience, I've had crippling anxiety, enhanced aggression, and oppression. I God, I hate this fuck. We'll be right back. I found another website that will the physical effect of working in a factory. The website is called www.johnsniderlaw.com. Some of the most common things that you can find in a factory are like overexertion, uh, repetitive motion and injuries, body movement injuries, um, and like transportation incidents. There's also other things like uh, harmful substance exposure, you know, to like chemicals and stuff like that. There's also a risk of explosions and fires. I found this last website related to working in a factory. Uh, it's called www 
cnbc.com. This factory is about the nightmares of working in a factory in China. I don't work in a sweatshop, but still factories are really bad. Anyone who has ever worked in a factory knows how bad it is. This article basically states that uh, the Chinese factory workers producing toys for Hasbro, Disney, and Mattel are being subjected uh, to nightmare working conditions in the run-up to Christmas, an investigation has alleged. Uh, the report titled A Nightmare for Workers shows findings from campaign groups uh, China Labor Watch, Action Aid, CIR, and Solidaire Seuss, who sent undercover investigators to four factories that produce toys sold at Walmart, Costco, Target, and other international retailers. This part really stuck out to me. It's a passage that says, workers endangered. Investigators found that there were serious violations at the factory, which were endangering workers. In peak production season, employees were working up to 175 overtime hours per month. Chinese labor law restricts monthly overtime to 36 hours per month. But the report alleged factories would often ask local governments to implement a comprehensive working hour scheme to override existing legislation. Workers were also not being given the legally required 24-hour safety training before commencing work, meaning they were unaware of how to protect themselves from toxic chemicals. The investigation also showed that employers were failing to provide them with the necessary safety equipment to prevent contact from those chemicals. International brand companies are not accepting responsibility for the rights abuses in their supply chain. They claim to meet their targets, they use short-term contracts with a fierce price competition to change orders on a very short-term basis. Every year, many companies will request toy factories to increase their production quotas while decreasing the cost of production. What is society doing to its people? Seriously. This seriously makes me so angry. These work conditions are horrible. On that last part, the managers and the staff will always try to decrease the manpower or used on a single job. So for example, you have a two person job. What they will do is screw you in the butthole and make one person run both jobs. You can't refuse either because it's your job. You'll always get paid the same rate regardless of how hard or physically taxing it is. Another thing is too, the harder you work, the more of the workload they pile on you. In my factory, I'm a trainer, I'm a team lead, and I'm a forklift operator. Those are just a couple titles I have. So I'm constantly working around the clock with multiple qualifications at the same rate of 1440. What a joke. To be straightforward, it's sometimes not even worth it. I'm not even making $15 an hour. So recently, my factory has been going through a lot of changes, from new machines being put in to everybody being segregated into small groups. My factory isn't even that big, and it only consists of about 30 people per shift. All right, listen to this. We've been in these groups for about a couple weeks, and it has raised a safety concern. This lady that I was giving rides to got her, and she kept telling them that she had restrictions, and that she couldn't work on certain jobs. She kept telling them, well, it turns out that people don't listen. She had to take off work because of her hip, and it only got worse. The next Monday, I was taking her into work, and she showed me her leg because she said it felt numb. Then, she told me of how she was in so much pain, and she said she might have a blood clot in her leg. I immediately got mad about the situation. It's not fair and not right for them to do that to people. This lady was on the job three times a week, so the wear and tear damage on her body is significant. On the same day, the this other young lady that I work with made a petition to try and combat the groups and try to eliminate them. The petition failed because whether or not we like it, the groups will remain. I, myself, have written many suggestions trying to combat all these changes, but all of them have failed too. It's total bullshit, and honestly, none of those office staff are ever on the floor to see how or experience how bad these processes really are. In their mind, this is a factory, and in the words of a great businessman, it's just good business. We still do the same rotation even without the groups. The whole situation is a joke, to be honest. The office people want to change things and try to make the processes better. They're never on the floor, and the processes just seem to be getting worse, and they never listen to the worker grunts on the floor. In conclusion, we the workers will not stand for this. We will not tolerate it being treated this way. When a worker isn't valued anymore, isn't busy, and isn't paid very well, then they will find work somewhere else where they feel appreciated. To end this video, don't work in a factory unless you absolutely have have to. It takes a really tough-minded person to keep coming back 
to a shitty place. Working in a factory also changes you as a person. When I was 19 and I started, I definitely didn't know what I was getting myself into. If you have any comments or questions, I would be happy to answer them. I hope you have a great 2020 and please hit the notification bell and subscribe if you haven't already. I would greatly appreciate it. Every Friday I will be launching more videos, so stay tuned and you know just look out for my videos.